Hey everybody, this is our video all about microscopes. Now, Mr. Johnstone is very passionate about the use of microscopes and you must use microscopes the right way in biology class or Mr. Johnstone will not let you use microscopes at all. So, this short video is to acquaint you with our microscopes and we have two different kinds. This right here is the student scope. This one is the teacher scope. Um, the teacher scope can be used by students, but only if you show proficient use in the student scope here. You notice the immediate difference is the number of eye pieces here. This is a monocular scope on the student scope. It only has one, uh, only one lens through which to look through. You can only use one eye in order to look through this eyepiece into the microscope. This one has two eyepieces. This is a binocular scope. Again, monocular scope and binocular scope. The parts of the microscope, uh, aside from that, are very much the same. So I'm going to put the binocular scope away just for a minute and focus here on our student scope because this is the one that you're going to be using. Um, this is the eyepiece right here. This is the part that you look through. You must cover one eye or squint um, or, or, or you know, close one eye in order to look through with the other eye. Um, and this uh, eyepiece has a magnification of 10 times. So if you just look through this and, and didn't look through the lenses that are down here on the scope, then you would magnify your specimen just 10 times. And we'll get back to magnification, but again, the lens that's present in here magnifies things just 10 times their normal size. Um, the eyepiece is attached to the head. The head on these scopes rotates. Okay, so you can ask a friend to look at your specimen and somebody else at your table can look at your specimen without moving the microscope. Um, because you're looking at things that are microscopic, you don't want to be moving around the scope all, all the time because then your specimen is going to get jostled and vibrate and then um, if this is a living specimen that you're looking at, um, you might you might kill the specimen if you're looking at single-celled organisms, for example. So um, you want to make sure that you rotate the head. Not all of our scopes do that. You want to make sure that yours does if you want to share your image that you see in the scope with somebody else. If you're going to move the scope, you just want to make sure that you slide it very gently across the table so somebody else can use it. Um, this right here is the arm. It obviously, the main function is simply hold up the head and the eyepiece and the objective lenses that are right here. The objective lenses are on a turret. A turret is something that turns. So you can see that I can turn this very easily. Um, but when I find the scope uh, and I'm ready to use it, you'll notice that the scope always has the red lens present that's locked into place. So the eyepiece comes down here and you view through the red objective lens in this case. Um, and that's one of the first big things that you got to know about the microscope is that when you put the microscope away, you got to make sure that the red lens is in place so the very next person to use your scope in the next class or the next day um, has that red lens in place because we always start with the red lens when we're looking at any kind of specimen. So again, this is the turret. It turns and you can feel uh, that the objective lenses lock into place. So the red lens magnifies things four times. So if you look through the eyepiece, which is 10 times, and the 4x objective lens, then you have magnified your specimen 40 times. So it's a magnification uh, of 40 times um, because uh, it's a, a multiplication of the, of the magnification. So 10x times 4x is 40x. The next lens on most scopes is, is labeled with a yellow uh, label right here, and it also has the number 10 on it. It is 10x. So with our multiplication, we have 10x at the eyepiece, 10x at the objective, and you are now looking at your specimen at 100x magnification or 100 times its normal size. Then we have our highest magnification, which is the blue lens on most of our scopes, and it has a magnification of 40. So 10 on the eyepiece, 40 on the objective lens. You can look at your specimen at 400 times its normal size. Um, most of our scopes, that's as high as the magnification goes. Um, the teacher scope goes up to 1,000x, but the uh, student scopes normally go up to just 400x. So again, that's 40, 100, and 400 times magnification that you can look at your specimen. So I'm going to rotate this back to the red lens because we always start with the red lens. Um, the black stage here is for placing your specimen on, the glass slide with your specimen. This is called the stage. The stage, go, stage goes up and down in order to focus your specimen. I'll show you that in a minute. We have stage clips here in case you get a glass slide on here that you want to keep from moving. You can use these little uh, steel clips to clip it in place. So if you did move the scope, your specimen won't move hardly at all. And that's a good thing. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, we have the adjustment knobs. Right here we have a large one and a small one. The large one moves the stage up and down a lot. 
whereas the fine adjustment moves the stage up and down just a little bit. And so you can do rough adjustments. You bring your specimen into focus uh, uh, approximately with the large knob here, or the rough focus. And then once you have it approximately in focus, you can use the small uh, knob here to bring it into fine focus. So you can bring it into a sharper focus so that you can see it a lot better with the fine focus knobs. So you want to use both knobs when you're focusing your specimen. You should be looking at your specimen in as fine detail as possible. Nobody wants to be looking at blurry images or out of focus images of your specimens. So bring it into focus first with a large knob so you can see it and then to not only see it but see it in as much detail as possible is to use the fine focus there. And as you spin those knobs you'll notice the stage goes up and down. Okay. Um, we have the uh, plug-in here. This is an electric scope. Um, our, most of our student scopes are rechargeable so you can actually use this on the table without plugging this in but if you ever did lose power then of course you can plug it in and we usually plug it in at the end of the day just to make sure that we have enough power for the next day okay what else do we have here well so it has electric power because it has uh, an LED light down here this light is very bright and it's controlled by this knob down here I'm not quite sure if you can see that um, in the video but there's a knob right here and as you turn it one way it brightens the uh, light there and if you turn it the other way it dims the light depending on what you're looking at you might want a bright light or a dim light most people think bright light is the best but when you look through this on high magnification with a very bright light you can really hurt your eyes so um, be careful only look at something uh, in the appropriate amount of of light. Um, and if it's hard to see your specimen, you probably need some more light, so don't be afraid to uh, adjust that knob there. Um, on the back is another knob. This is the power cord, power knob here, uh, right next to where the power cord plugs in, and you can turn your scope on and off. Don't forget to turn your scope on when you want to use it, and definitely don't forget to turn it off when you are done, especially with these rechargeable scopes. If this is left on overnight, then the battery dies, and we can't use it the next day. So there's the light. Um, there's actually a small lens right here in the stage, which helps focus that light just a little bit. But also right here on the stage is another knob. This is called the iris. This is another way to uh, change the way the light comes into your specimen. The iris is another way to control the amount of light. So you control the intensity of the light with the knob down on the base of the microscope, but you can control sort of the amount of light, um, which is a little bit different than the intensity of light um, that gets to your specimen. And between the objective that you choose, the amount of light and the intensity of light, um, you can see your specimen really well. Every specimen is going to require a unique combination of magnification, the uh, iris adjustment for the amount of light, and the light adjustment for the intensity of light. Every specimen is going to require a unique combination of those in order to see your specimen in the best way possible. Um, so I think we've hit everything. Um, I told you I think that this is the base. This is where all the electronics are um, and the rechargeable battery. So we have the base, we got the arm, we got the head, we got the eyepiece, we have the turret with the objective lenses. There are three objective lenses. Um, one has a collective magnification um, allowed to you for 40x. The other one has 100x, and our highest magnification is 400x. Um, this is the stage with the stage clips. There's the iris, there's the light adjustment, and the rough focus knob, and the fine focus knob, and of course the power button on the back. Um, so let's uh, briefly go uh, into some detail about how you handle this scope. Always handle it with two hands. Don't just haul it around with one hand. You might drop it. Um, this scope costs about $300. So uh, you don't, I don't want to send you a home of a bill for that, okay? So uh, always handle it with two hands. When you start, you always start with the red lens. And when you finish, you always start with the red lens as well. Um, even if you've been looking through the other objective lenses, like the yellow or the blue lens, always turn it around to the red lens while you're wrapping this scope up um, and wrapping class up and getting ready to go. Um, also, the rough focus, um, you want to turn that so that the stage goes to its lowest stage uh, position possible, and it looks like it's, it's at its lowest stage possible here. Um, that's because um, as people walk in the next day or the next class to use the scope, they're going to predict that it's at its lowest point, and if it's not, then it, come, it, it could get adjusted and hit the uh, objective lenses while someone is focusing it, um, and they would do that unknowingly. So if you put it all the way down to the lowest stage, then you know that um, if you do that and everybody else does that, then you know every time you walk into your scope, the stage is going to be at its lowest point, the red lens is going to be in place because that's where you got to start, everything's wrapped up including the cord, and that's ready to go. This is how you're going to find it, and this is how you should leave your scope. So, um, I'm very particular about the way we use our scopes. Now you know all the parts of the scope. We're going to use our scopes in class to look at all kinds of different cells um, and train you on how to look at them very, very effectively. So there's your scope, and there's your video, and I'll see you next time.